Hayaan niyo po akong batiin kayo ng magandang buhay po sa ating lahat. Kumusta po ang uh, lahat? Alam ko marami na po kayong mga webinars na inaatinan sa ngayon. Pero bago yan, gusto ko muna magpakilala sa inyo. I am Jordan C. Guiliano, Junior High School Faculty of Southwood 8C National High School, Rodriguez Montalban, Rizal. I am the President of the Philippine Organization of TNE and TVL Educators Incorporated. Uh, today, I'll be talking about ethical issues with using technology in the classroom. What comes into your mind when you heard the word ethical issues? So, para sa akin, ito ay isang ethics. So, ang ethics po ba? At ang etiquette ay the same. So ito po yung aaralin natin sa ngayon sa ating webinar session. So una po, I have here the first question. What are digital ethics? So pag sinabi po natin digital ethics, it is the study of how to manage oneself ethically, professionally, and in a clinically sound manner via online and digital mediums. Meaning, yung ating galaw, uh, behavior, while we are on online. Next po, we have the data privacy. So, alam po natin ito kung ano yung tinatawag na data privacy. This is the Data Privacy Act of 2012. We will be dealing this also as we go along with our discussions. But, what is the cyber ethics? When we say cyber ethics, it is the study of moral, legal, and social issues involving cy cyber technology. It examines the impact that cyber technology has for our social, legal, and moral systems. It also evaluates the social policies and laws that have been framed in response to issues generated by the development and use of cyber technology. Hence, it is a recipe recall relationship here but why is cyber ethics important cyber ethics concerns to the code of responsible behavior on the internet just as we are taught to act responsibly in everyday life this is a growing problem and without parents and teachers using the resources available Nothing can be done to prepare future generations of internet users from being safe online. So, pag sinabi po natin cyber ethics, we are talking here of a responsible behavior on the internet. Kung paano tayo gumamit ng uh, internet. Okay? Next po. What are some of the precautions should teachers take when using technology? I think this is very much important. Please take note of this, my dear audience. First, the, there are 10 classroom rules for using technology. The first one, only visit approved internet sites. So please, please tell our students to only visit approved internet sites. Next, never give out your personal information. Wag na wag natin ibibigay ang ating mga personal information. Napakadelikado po ito sa panahon ngayon. Kasi pwede po itong magamit laban sa atin. Okay, ano po yung mga personal information na ito na hindi natin dapat ibinibigay? Yung pangalan natin, yung address natin. So, mga passwords, no? napakahalaga po yung mga ito. Kasi pwede po itong gamitin laban sa atin. Next po. Tell your teacher if you see something uncomfortable or inappropriate. So we are talking here of our students. So kung mayroon kang napapansin sa internet, sa, sa mga posts na mga klase mo, na that you are uncomfortable or inappropriate, please tell your teacher. Para bago pa mangyari ang lahat, bago lumala ang problema, ay nasolusyonan na ito ng inyong teacher. Next po, never download anything without teacher permission. Tama naman po, no? Na hindi po tayo nagda-download ng kung ano-ano o basta-basta lang na walang permission sa ating teacher. Next, 
leave your workspace as you found it. So kung uh, dinatnan mo ang ang works, workspace mo na malinis, dapat po pag umalis po tayo, malinis din po yung workspace na yun. Another, 10 classroom rules for using technology. We have this number 6, print only if you have permission. So, ganun din po. Dapat po humingi tayo ng permission kung gusto natin mag-print ng mga bagay-bagay or anything that could uh, help us in our lesson. So ask a permission from your teacher. Next po, never change settings without permission. So dito marami akong nakikita at napapansin ng mga bata na chini-change nila yung mga settings ng, ng computer na ginagamit nila. So it's a no-no-no to please don't change settings without permission. You always have to ask permission. Next po, Place devices on charges, chargers will not in use. So, uh, pag ginamit po natin yung laptops, yung tablets ng ating kapatid, so it is just proper for us na i-charge natin. Kasi baka paggamit niya, hindi niya magamit dahil hindi po naka-charge. Low bat na po or empty bat. Lalong-lalo na ngayon sa new normal, mag-aaral na po tayo, tayong mga bata sa bahay at Iisa lang po yung tablet or laptop or cellphones na ginagamit natin. So make sure na after using it, ay dapat i-charge natin para sa susunod na gagamit ay hindi siya magkakaproblema. Next, touch the mouse and keyboard gently. So, ayun po, wag po natin idiin masyado. Well, anyway, very sensitive naman po yung mga mouse and keyboard. Nagka-function naman yan. Kahit hindi natin masyadong idiin, no? So gently touch the mouse and keyboard. And the last one for the 10 classroom rules for using technology is do not eat or drink near devices. So very clear kasi po pag kumain po tayo or uminom doon at natapunan yung ating mga gadgets, possible po na magmalfunction siya at hindi na po gumana. Okay? So next slides. We have the summary of what we have talking a while ago. The 10 technology rules for every classroom. I just want to repeat it. Only visit approved internet sites. Never give out your personal information. Tell your teacher if you see something uncomfortable or inappropriate. Never download anything without teacher permission. Leave your workspace as you found it. Print only if you have permission. Never change settings without permission. Place devices on chargers when not in use. Touch the mouse and keyboard gently. And lastly, do not eat or drink near devices. I hope I was very clear on this. Next slides. We have, can I use a copyrighted song in my video? So, karamihan po ito nagiging problema natin kasi dahil hindi nga tayo nagpapaalam kung saan-saan tayo, basta, basta, basta na lang po tayo kumukopya, no? Lalong-lalo na sa mga lessons natin as teachers, basta-basta na lang tayo kumukuha. Po, pwede po ba itong gawin? Okay, pwede po. Yes, if the video is for educational purposes and you are not sharing the video publicly and lastly, it is for personal use. No, hindi ka pwedeng mag-share uh, or kumuha ng mga video without a permission from the owner. If you are putting the video on a public blog, website, social media, or YouTube, etc. Next, no, hindi ka pwedeng maglagay ng video if you are sharing the video at a public event. Unless otherwise, ulitin ko po, pwede naman po, basta tayo ay nagpaalam doon sa may-ari o may gawa ng video. Next po. The social media etiquette and ethics. What is then the difference the difference between etiquette and ethics? Mayroon po ba pagkakaiba nito when it comes to social media? Well, of course, there is a difference between the two. When we are talking of etiquette, it is the proper way to behave while ethics studies ideas about good and bad behavior. 
So once combined, etiquette and ethics, that becomes a professionalism, which is the skill in good judgment and polite behavior expected from a person trained to do a job such as social media marketing. So if we have this etiquette and ethics sa, sa mga sarili natin, then we become professionals in dealing online. Okay, because social media blurs the lines between our personal and professional lives, it is useful to look at actions in social media from three perspectives. Remember this, we have personal or individual, professional or current perspective employee, and brand or the organization. How do we navigate our social landscape where our works collide and brands communicate like people in one-on-one -on -one conversations with consumers? For taking any social media actions, consider these questions. So first, personal social action as an individual. What are these questions? Is it about me? Next, am I stalking someone? Next, am I spamming them? What do you mean by the word spam or spamming? Spamming is when one person or a company sends an unwanted email to another person. Spam emails are the computer version of unwanted junk mail that arrive that arrives in a mailbox such as advertising, pamphlets, and brochures. So, yung mga nakikita natin sa email ng mga, mga advertising, pamphlets, and brochures na hindi naman natin na-requests, ang tawag po nun ay mga spam emails. Next, did I ask before I tag? Ayan, uh, guilty ako dito kasi most of the time nagtatag ako ng mga pictures na hindi po ako nagpapaalam doon sa tao na may ari. So, kailangan, kailangan that you have to ask permission doon sa tao may ari before you talk anything from, from that person. Next, did I read before commenting or sharing? Oo, uh, marami pong mga tao na hindi po nila binabasa lahat yung issue. Basta-basta na lang po sila kaagad nagko-comment. No? So, bago natin po ito gawin, mga kaguro, mga ka-chairs, mga ka-teachers, dapat po ay basahin muna natin yung buong kwento before we give our comments or share that, that piece of uh, text or post to someone else. Okay? Kasi baka mamaya nagpo-post ka na ng, ng obscenity, yung profanity, yung may pagkabastos na, may pagkabold na, yung something like that. No? So, basahin nyo muna kung ano yung nila naman ng mga text. Eh kasi tayo, ang tendency natin, pag, pag mahaba, hindi natin tinatapos binabasa eh. Yung una lang, yung gitna at yung huli. Karamihan yung ginagawa natin. Tapos, magko-comment na tayo or share na natin. So, iwasan natin ito. Next po, am I grateful and respectful? Yes, importante po na respectful po tayo. Or nagre-respect po tayo dun sa mga tao na na nag, nagpo-post ng kanilang mga uh, hinalakit sa sarili doon sa social media. No? Next po, is it right place for the message? So, tama po ba yung message na pinaglagyan mo? Sa Facebook mo pa dapat i-post yun or dapat pinersonal mo na lang, pinie mo na lang yung tao. So, tanong mo yan muna bago ka mag-send sa online. Kasi ang hirap ng mabawi ng mga yon. Okay? Once na nandoon na yon at nakopya ng, ng iba, kahit binura mo na yon mananatili pa rin yun. Okay? Next po, am I in the right account? So, tama po ba yung account na gamit ko? Akin po ba yung account na do, kung saan mag-share or magpo-post ako? Kasi yung iba, minsan yung naiwan ng account na bukas, alam sila at nagpo-post sila doon. Kaya po, kailangan... It should be your own account. And lastly, have I listened twice as much as I'm, as I'm talking? So, nakinig po ba ako? Mas marami ba akong time makinig kaysa magsalita po ako? So, dapat po mas marami tayong time para makinig bago tayo magsabi ng, ng ating emotions or feelings. 
lalong lalo na sa social media. Next po. So we're talking here a professional social action. So as a professional one, what are those questions? We have, does it meet the social media policy? So yung mga ginagawa po natin, naka-angla ba ito sa social media policy? Next, does it hurt my company's reputation? So kung if you're a teacher, your company is dead end. So make sure na yung mga pinupost natin ay hindi ito makakasakit bilang isang guro at sa company kung saan tayo nagtatrabaho. Next po, does it help my company's marketing? Makakatulong po ba ito na aking ipinost sa company's marketing? Would my boss be happy seeing it? So kung magiging masaya naman ang boss mo sa mga pinost mo, why not go ahead, post it, no problem. Okay. Am I being open about who I work for? So kilala ko ba yung mga taong kung saan ako nagtatrabaho? Next, am I being fair and accurate? Fair lang po ba ako at accurate lang po ba ako sa mga nilalabas kong posts or mga informations about me and about the company? Next po, am I being respectful nor malicious? So, nagre-respect ba ako doon sa mga pinupost nila? Sinasalang-alang po ba yung kanilang emotions or feelings when I comment or suggest something? And next, does it respect intellectual property? So, wag na wag natin kukopyahin yung mga bagay na hindi naman sa atin. Kukopyahin natin tapos aangkilin natin. Okay, mali po yun. Pwede po tayong kasuhan dyan ng plagiarism. And lastly, is this confidential information? So, pag nalaman mo na confidential information, ano ba dapat ang gawin mo? You have to, go, to keep it. Wag na wag po natin ishishare or propose po natin yan because you might destroy your reputation of a person, of that person. Okay? And let's move on to the next, the brand social action. This is as an organization. And ano po ba dapat yung mga questions that would guide us in posting in a social media when we are in a brand of social action or when we are in an organization. First, does it speak to my target market? Uh, tama po ba yung, yung, yung pinupost ko? Sila po ba yung aking target market? Kung sa, kung sa klase po, sila po ba yung appropriate na mga bata na dapat makarinig nitong lessons na ito, na topic na ito? Does it add value? Next po, does, does it fit the social channel? Next, is it authentic and transparent? Yes po, dapat po authentic, real yung information na ating nilalabas. Hindi po siya, kasi karamihan ngayon, mga fake news eh. So, na, so totoo lang, nakaka-stress yung mga fake news. So make sure that we are responsible enough to, to share with our audience what is really authentic, what is really real, okay? And let us be transparent. Next po, is it real and unique? Yun nga po. Next po, is it positive and respectful? So, napakahalaga na we need to respect our audience. Lalong-lalo na, na ito ay online. Next po, does it meet codes of conduct? And we have, does it meet all the rules and regulations? And lastly, does it meet the social media policy? So, I think I have uh, discussed so far all about individual, as an individual uh, user of social media, as an organization, as a professionals. Okay, so I hope you're still there, you're still watching, you're still learning from the topic that we are discussing today. Next, let's move on to what we called the Data Privacy Act of 2012. I'll not be discussing more on this. Hahapiyawan ko lang ang aking discussions about the Republic Act Number 10173. This is also known as the Data Privacy Act of 2012. These are the general provisions of under this Privacy Act. We have two. Number one, protects the privacy of individuals 
while ensuring free flow of information to promote innovation and growth. Number two, regulates the collection, recording, organization, storage, updating, or modification, retrieval, consultation use, consul consolidation, blocking, erasure, or destruction of personal data. And lastly, ensures that the Philippines complies with the international standards set for data protection through National Privacy Commission. Okay, so I'll not, again, only think of all, I'll not be dwelling more on this Republic Act because we will have another set of seminars about this Data Privacy Act of 2012. So as a general reminder, the data privacy in social media use, please refrain from attaching personal, sensitive personal and privileged information of patients in posting on social media in accordance with the Data Privacy Act of 2012. So, ayan po, mag-iingat po tayo ng mga pag-post natin sa social media, lalo lang lalo, lalo na sa pag-attach ng mga personal and sensitive information or videos or pictures. Say, for example, uh, nasa hospital ka, tapos uh, kasama ka doon sa mga anak yung, yung pinsan mo, kinunan mo siya ng video, inattach mo. And I think that is very wrong. Social media sensitive yan eh, di ba? So makikita nila, uh, for sure, pag ipiesta ka ng, 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 ng uh, sambayan ng Pilipino. No? Hindi ng sambayan ng Pilipino, kundi yung lahat ng pwedeng makakita doon. So please be sensitive on that. Okay? Thank you. Next po, I, uh, we will be doing more, or yeah, shall I say, these are the Republic Act of the Philippines related to IT. So, meron pong anin. We have Republic Act 10844, Department of Information and Communications Technology Act of 2015. Another, Republic Act 10173, which is the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Next, we have the RA 10175. The Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. Next, we have the Republic Act 8792, the Electronic Commerce Act of 2000. Next, we have the Republic Act 8293, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. And lastly, we have the Republic Act 8747, the Philippine Year 2000 Disclosure and Readiness Act. So these as these are just guidelines or that could help us if ever the couple problem tayo na pwede nating tingnan ito or a policy guide when using online or yeah when we are online Okay let us move on to proper social media etiquette First one comments follow you if you don't want something coming back to you don't post it so yung mga comments ay nandyan lang lagi yan. Kung ayaw mo may magko-comment sa'yo sa mga pictures, sa mga videos, sa mga text na, na pinost mo sa online. So wag mong i-post yan kung ayaw mo may magko-comment sa'yo. Okay? Next po, beware of overshare. Everyone doesn't need to know everything you're doing at every moment. So hindi ka na kailangan na lahat ng bawat kimbot mo ay ipopost mo sa social media. Next, not everything is personal. Just because someone doesn't follow you or accept your friend request doesn't mean they don't like you. So, dahil naghingi ka ng friend request tapos hindi naman inaccept ng 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 other uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yung friend mo na nag-request ka doon sa kanya, it doesn't mean na hindi kanya gusto. Oh, may dahilan lang po siya siguro kung bakit hindi niya ina-accept sa ngayon. Okay? Next po. Number four. Tone is everything so keep it real and balanced and try to avoid ambiguous sarcasm. So, when we say ambiguous sarcasm, to be specific, this statement refers to a phrase in which the writer or speaker's intention of being sarcastic is not disclosed to the reader. Listen it listener deliberately or accidentally so hindi intention uh, may, please be careful pag nagko-comment po tayo wag po tayong maging sarcastic 
at make sure na hindi po tayo nakakasakit doon sa ating mga mga doon sa sa picture na binibigyan natin ng comments or video na binibigyan natin ng ating mga comments. Next po, don't call out as this hurts feelings, damages reputations and upsets readers also known as cyber bullying. So mag-iingat po tayo lalong-lalo na tayo mga yung ating mga estudyante dito sa cyber bullying. So malaking problema po ito sa ngayon. Okay? Next number six. Think before tagging. Ask people before tagging to avoid any embarrassment or reputation damage. So, ayan, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, uh, guilty po ako dito kasi most of the time nagtatag ako ng pictures ng mga friends ko na hindi po ako sa kanila nagpapaalam. So, mali po pala yan. Okay? Next po, I ignore the haters. It's easy to engage in an online battle, but try to stay out of it or respond simply and factually. So, kailangan, or kung may iwasan natin yung mga haters natin, iwasan natin sila. Wala silang may dudulot na kabutihan sa atin, kundi stress lang po. Okay? Act how you would want to be treated. Be the example and be polite. So, kung gusto natin itreat tayo ng maayos ng ating kapwa, ay kumilos tayo ng maayos at naayon sa gusto natin at sa gusto ng uh, the, the audience na mayroon po tayo. Okay. And the last one, don't demand reciprocation. Follow post because you want to not because you expect something in return. So, uh, wag po tayo mag-demand na hindi ibig sabihin na nag-comment ka ng maganda or mabuti doon sa pictures na mayroon siya ay magko-comment din siya ng maganda sa mga pictures na pinost mo or video. Okay? So, what are those social media do's and don'ts? So, we have the do's and don'ts. First one, know your privacy settings. Don't post profanity, obscenity, or anything that defect you in unfavorable light. So, importante po na we have to check the privacy settings ng ating mga social media platforms na mga ginagamit. Alam natin kung sino lang dapat ang makakita doon sa mga pinupost natin. And then, make sure na hindi po tayo nagpo-post ng mga bastos na no, pwedeng makasira sa atin. Next po, understand the limits of online privacy. Uh, don't vent online or tell work stories. So, uh, wag natin gawing pahingahan or magkakwento tayo ng kung ano-ano sa mga sudyante natin while online na posibleng makasira din po sa atin in the future. Next po, we have learned the Privacy Act of 2012. Yung kanina nga po na sinabi ko sa inyo na dapat po ay alam natin what is this all about the Privacy Act of 2012. Don't post anything about or related to students. So, napakahalaga po na wag na wag po tayong magpo-post ng kung ano-ano tungkol sa sudyante natin, lalong-lalo na kung ito ay makakasira sa kanila. Next po, learn your school's acceptable use policy. Don't accept an online relationship with anyone you don't know offline. So, ayan, uh, hindi maganda makipagrelasyon through online, no? Dapat alam natin at kilala natin kung sino yung mga taong nakakausap natin. Okay? Next po, keep work and play separate. Don't join groups that may be considered unprofessional or inappropriate. So, wag po tayong sasali ng mga GC na uh, that are considered unprofessional or inappropriate. Yung hindi naman makakatulong sa atin as an individual para sa ating growth. No? Next and the last for those, monitor your own internet presence. Okay. So, These are the social media dos and dos. These are just an additional uh, of what I have uh, talked. Uh, yeah, of what I have talked uh, talked a while ago. Do post relevant content. Do share content from third parties. Do share your company's successes. Do interact with your followers. Don't forget to post again. Don't be too wordy. Don't forget to use visuals. Don't be afraid to have fun. So these are just simple social media's do's and don'ts. Now, 
Let's proceed to the five golden rules of email etiquette. So lahat naman po tayo ay may email, lalong lalo na sa panahon ngayon. Okay? Kasi ito yung safe way of transferring information from one another through email. Number one, address your recipient accordingly. Double or triple check that you have that correct spelling of the recipient's name and their corresponding title. So, sinasabi lang po dito na make sure na yung email na gagamitin natin ay tama lahat. Okay? Para makarating sa kanya yung ating uh, inform, uh, message na gusto natin iparating sa kanya. Next, use proper salute, 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 salutations. I'm sorry. Use proper salutations and closing statements. Show your reader that you respect them with a courteous greeting and closing. So, i-address natin ng tama ang ating mga, ang, ang binibigyan natin ng email. Kung siya ay isang doctor, isa siyang attorney, so address him or her properly. Okay? The third one, format appropriately. Your email should be organized, easy to read, and grammatically correct. So, kahit saan naman tayo, hindi lang sa email, pag magsusula tayo, make sure na naiintindihan yung ating uh, message at ito ay grammatically correct. That is a sign of being professional. Okay? Next golden rule is... Avoid all caps. All capitals can easily be misinterpreted. Plus, there's plenty of ways to get your message across while communicating its importance. So, alam niyo po, kasi pag all caps po, ang ibig sabihin po nun ay galit tayo. You know? So, kung maaari po, huwag i-all caps pag nag, uh, nagbibigay tayo ng mensahe sa ating mga kaibigan. Okay? And the last one, Compress large files. Documents, pictures, and videos are easier to download and open when compressed due to their smaller size. So, mas mabilis ma-download kung ikinukompress natin yung mga large files. Okay, so let us uh, uh, tumulong tayo no, na, na makuha yung mga informations na yun. Kasi kung large files siya, nahihirapan yung magda-download ng mga informations na yun. Okay? Next. We have the Zoom meeting. So, karamihan po sa atin ay nagkakaroon ng Zoom meeting. So, what are the those of Zoom meeting? We have be on time, no? Uh, nasa bahay ka na nga lang, late ka pa. Okay? So, be on time kung mayroon kayong mga Zoom meeting. Next, sit in a quiet spot in your house with limited distractions or noises, no? So, umupo sa isang tabi sa bahay niyo, sa isang lugar na, may, na wala pong distractions or noise when attending a Zoom meeting. Next po, keep yourself mute until it is your turn to speak. So, kung hindi mo pa time talk, so, i-mute mo yung inyong mic. And next, make sure family members know not to interrupt you to interrupt you at this time. So, dapat alam ng mga kasamahan mo sa bahay na mayroon kang meeting ngayon para maiwasan nila ang pagkakaroon ng ingay. Okay? or ma-distract ma ka while attending the Zoom meeting. Next, dress appropriately. Alam nyo po, kahit nasa bahay lang po tayo, nag a ng Zoom meeting, dapat po maayos po ang ating pananamit. Kasi po, minsan kinukunan tayo ng pictures. No? So, ang pangit naman siguro na nakahubad ka or nakasandu ka lang ng suot or nakadaster ka lang. No? So, dress appropriately. Next, be yourself. Of course, no? importante po yan. And next, raise your virtual hand to speak. So, kung mag gusto mo magsalita at mayroon kang gusto kong point out, ay buksan mo lang yung mic mo and wait until such time that you are acknowledged by the host. Okay, so next, we have the Zoom meeting. The don'ts naman po ito. Don't walk around with your device. Make sure to stay in one spot during your meetings. Opo, huwag kang palakad-lakad habang may Zoom meeting kayo. I think it is not proper or it's improper for you to do that. Next, don't eat or drink during your meetings, please. Ayan. So, iwasan natin. Ako, guilty rin ako dito kasi minsan umatan ako ng meeting dahil na late na po ako. So, while attending the meeting, minsan nagkakape po ako. Or, no, 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 hindi ako nagkakape pala. I'm sorry. Uh, umiinom po ako ng milk. 
or yeah, nagmamilo po. So hindi po pala tama yun na umiinom po tayo or kumakain or mayroon nagbe-breakfast ako min, uh, minsan. Ayan. So iwasan natin yan. Don't interrupt your friends when they are speaking. So ayan, wag natin i-interrupt ang ating mga kaibigan or ang ating speaker kung siya ay nagsasalita. Again, let us wait until such time that we are recognized by the host to, to talk. Okay? Next, don't turn music or television during the meeting. Ayan, meron akong inatinend na meeting siya na uh, yung speaker nakabukas yung kanyang ano, television. So napakaan proper po, no? Uh, hindi po maganda na nakabukas yung TV or my music po kayo while you are delivering your your webinar or your talk no kasi nakaka-distract po siya sa audience mo next don't forget to smile and be happy that we are still a learning community ayun importante importante po mga ka-cheers mga kaguro na nag-smile po tayo na in spite of this in spite of everything uh, we still manage to smile no kayang-kaya natin ito basta tulong-tulong po tayo okay itong pandemya na ating uh, nararanasan sa ngayon. Ayan, so special note to parents. Zoom meetings are a special time for the teacher to connect with the students. Feel free to help your child with any technical difficulties. If you have questions or concerns, please reach out to the teacher through email or have a personal message or call him after the session. And of course, say thank you for that. So during during the online meeting, during the the sessions, during the the online class, tayo mga magulang wag natin interrupt yung ating teacher while discussing. So kung may gusto tayo ng itanong or may concerns po tayo, dapat after the the meeting or after the the session, don po tayo magcall sa kanya or magmessage sa kanya. Okay? Next po. These are the offline to online. What is my role as a parent? So, I I intend to to uh, give these guidelines to our parent. No, I hope may mga magulang tayo na nakikinig ngayon sa aking webinar. Well, of course, I think mayroon kasi yung mga teachers are they are also parents at the same time. Okay. So una po na those I help your child create and stick to their routine. Work together with your child to create a schedule that works for them. It won't look like a regular school day. Instead, focus on setting up a sustainable routine that can accommodate both your child's and your needs. Routines are helpful to get your child into a positive headspace for learning. So napakahalaga po, lalong-lalo na ngayon, ang ating mga anak ay nasa bahay lang po. So tulungan po natin sila na magkaroon ng routine no? sa pag-aaral. So ibig sabihin, ah... Uh, Pag sinabi nating routine, yung madalas na ginagawa nila sa bahay na mamaya kasi minsan 10 o'clock na nagigising sila. So, yung klase will start at 7 o'clock siguro. No? So, tulungan po natin sila na na magkaroon ng, ng uh, time para sa sarili nila na mag-stick sa isang routine. Lalong-lalo na sa kanilang pag-aaral. No? Next po, I connect with the teacher to the personalized learning. If you're worried your child isn't completing all the tasks, involve your child's teachers. Who can advise you on which task you, your child should focus on? Okay, so connect with the teacher to personalize learning. So kung meron po tayo mga magulang na hindi naiintindihan, naiintindihan about the lesson, so andyan na po ang teacher natin, pwede po natin tawagan siya para malaman natin kung ano yung uh, gusto natin itanong sa kanya about sa ating mga anak. Okay, next po. Take on the road of encourager. Be positive and interested in your child's own learning and help them start a learning task if necessary. But not try to hover. Your child will appreciate your initial support and gradual release of responsibility to them. To them. So, maliwanag na tayo po as parent, tayo po ay mag-encourage sa kanila 
na matuto sa kanilang pag-aaral at maging interesado sila sa pag-aaral dahil alam natin lahat na hindi biro ngayon ang ating kinaharap na pandemya so lahat po tayo ay nahihirapan sa ngayon okay next is stay connected discuss any concerns questions or request with your child's teachers who are eager to support you reach out to other parents set up a virtual play date for your child Connection is a vital for well-being. Alam niyo po, napakahalaga na connected po tayo. Uh, may, may kasabihan po tayo that no man is an island. So, we could not live by our own, no? So, kailangan natin ng connection. So, kung sa tingin natin, mga magulang, nahihirapan po tayo sa pag-aaral ng ating anak, pwede naman po tayo makipag-collaborate, makipag-yes, makipag-collaborate sa ibang mga parent at i-air natin yung ating mga problema. Baka kasi makatulong din po sila. Okay? Next po, the offline to online, what is my role as a parent? The don'ts naman po tayo, kasi kanina the do's. No? Don't expect the school day to look the same. Online learning affords your child more flexibility than if they were learning from school and that's okay. So, huwag natin expect mga magulang na same pa rin ang lahat ng pag-aaral nila ngayon. Because these are already online, blended learning, uh, what else? We have the TV or the radio-based instructions, modular online learning or distance learning. So, ibang-iba na po ang pag-aaral sa panahong ito ng pandemya. Next po is focus on time spent online. More screen and less on time don't necessarily correlate with better quality learning. Yes, it is true. Hindi ibig sabihin mahaba yung time ng anak mo sa, sa harapan ng TV or sa harapan ng laptop ay marami siyang natutunan. Okay? Next po, don't po. Play the role of teacher. Don't play the role of teacher. Although this new learning environment will more than likely require a more hands-on approach from parents, try not to fall into the trap of becoming their teacher. Try not to correct their work or interfere with the learning process. So, wag natin pangarapin. Parent po tayo. Minsan kasi may mga, may mga magulang na ginagampanan nila yung trabaho na ng teacher. Sila na nag-check ng gawa ng bata. Sila na minsan ang nagagawa. Sila na natin nagsasabi. Uh, that's not your job. Okay? Your job is to encourage your kids to study. And then, scaffold, scaffold them. Uh, tulungan natin sa umpisa. Then, hayaan na natin siyang gumawa sa sarili niya. Okay? Next po, I... Don't try to handle this alone. This transition is hard, especially for working parents. Know that you are not struggling alone and that it takes time to adjust to these new roles. So, hindi po tayo nag-iisa dito, no? So, mga nanay, uh, ulitin ko po, pwede po tayong tumawag ng help sa ating kapwa magulang or dumerekta po tayo sa ating, sa teacher ng ating mga anak kung sila po ay nahihirapan sa kanilang pag-aaral. Okay? And let me give you this mess, uh, this quote. Uh, this is one of my favorite quote in this pandemic. We need to embrace technology to make learning more engaging. Because when students are engaged and they are interested, that's where learning takes place. And uh, let me give you another uh, quote. Ito po ay napakinggan ko sa isa sa mga webinar ko at nagustuhan ko po siya. I really love this quote. This is from the First Lady Michelle Obama. The First Lady U.S. U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama. At ang sabi niya, You may not always have a comfortable life and you will not always be able to solve all of the world's problems at once. But, but don't ever underestimate the importance you can have because history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. So, alam niyo po, mga ka-cheers, mga ka-guro, napakaganda po ng message na ito. So, ayan po, sa ngayon po, ay magpapasalamat po ako sa inyo. Maraming maraming salamat po for staying with me up to now. Thank you so much. I hope mayroon po kayong natutunan sa webinar na ito. And syempre po, thank you po sa... PCPD Training Center po sa pagbibigay ng pagkakataon na, na makapagbahagi ako ng aking kaalaman. And uh, kay Kim, of course, na tumuling sa akin sa video na ito. Maraming salamat po sa iyo. Uh, God bless everyone and let us keep
save everyone. Uh, good, uh, God bless everyone. Uh, this is your speaker, Dr. Jordan C. Galeano, saying, Mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you.